he's wearing a San Francisco Giants hat, but a New York Giants like jersey. And I was just like, like who like who's doing continuity on this movie? Is that intentional? He's just a big fan of Giants. <laughs> Drive by movies. My name is Blaze. And I'm James. And never have I ever seen Bloodsport. And only one will triumph. Now I will break you. I international martial arts sensation Jean Claude Van Damme in Bloodsport. You haven't? This is weird. I haven't seen it either. <laughs> Oh, oops. I guess this is never have we ever. Anyways, Bloodsport is directed by Newt Arnold and stars Jean-Claude Van Damme, Donald Gibb, and Leah Airy. Bloodsport. Um, first and foremost, it has the world's record for the longest flashback in movie history. Uh, is the entire there's... movie a flashback now that I think about it? No, there's like three minutes Feels of like movie one. and then it goes into a world record of uh, 10 minutes and like 56 second flashback scene yeah so i don't know if this was on the trivia i didn't see it on there but i have heard like stories that this film they're having a lot of trouble editing the movie like it was basically this movie is supposed to be cursed people thought john claude was even brought in to start editing this film teach me i can do it there's just so many issues is obviously his baby it's his first like huge starring role um, you know, it's kind of how he exploded onto the scene, but basically, I guess they brought in like a professor of like film to like figure out how to make the film work. And that's why there are all these weird flashbacks in the beginning of the film where there's like John Claude Van Damme lookalikes, like child, like these children that are supposed to be like him, but they they make it like almost so funny because they're at their fake John Claude accent is so bad that right. it's, it's like worse than John Claude's accent that it's just... I don't know. I, th I thought the it, the beginning of the film I thought was just so hilarious, like that I was fucking losing it. Like I had to pause it and text you and just be like, "Dude, what are we watching?" I wish I had weed for this movie. Um, I mean, we're gonna trash this movie a lot, but I just want to say I loved this movie. Like I, I had so much fun. This is a movie I could rewatch like all the time for fun conversation. Um, but get into that we'll trash it but what are your thoughts though on it though? so kind of when i think about this show never have ever our first episode obviously talking about the exorcist because i hadn't seen it i felt like the idea of for starting this show would be watching movies we haven't seen and they and they're probably going to be all good movies you know like i thought they'd all be like really stellar movies because everyone's seen them but we hadn't seen them yet or i hadn't seen it or in this case we both haven't seen uh blood sport but this is a film that i definitely thought was probably like a great action film before we started watching it. Ah, I was mistaken. I think people love it for it being so cheesy, so campy. And this probably could have been on directed dumpster if I'm being honest, mm -hmm. but I'm glad we saw it because it is right up my alley. I do like these. I, I thought it was just a lot of fun. Like it's bad. Yeah, it's bad, but it, I thought it was a ton of fun. Well, also with some of the dialogue and lines, I was just like, nobody, talks this way like it felt like a movie that was written in a different language was copy and pasted into google translate was <laughs> then like like okay now we have the english draft and then like here you go i was like what like nobody talks this way like the phrase of that wasn't properly like coherent whatsoever or understandable i was just like confused at times I was like nobody like responds that way and it was just confusing at times but it was like hilarious and i just had to like you told me using any technique that works never to limit myself to one style to keep an open mind give me a second like this is it would be a really fun like midnight movie i'd say yeah. oh if they're ever playing that well if theaters ever open again <laughs> yeah. then I, I definitely would want to see this in one or if like this is the perfect drive-in movie i feel like it's just it's up there like there's so much fun stuff happening them playing like super nintendo or whatever in the arcade yeah it's just like there's so much fun in there in this movie i don't the know the intro my favorite character was donald gibb uh, i forget his character's name but just like his intro scene is him on a bus and he's like hitting on this uh woman on the bus and he's just like have you ever been with a big man before and i was like what <laughs> 
<laughs> like, what else is he? What else is he in? Like, I felt he feels like somebody I know from something, but I, I, this might have been the first film I'd seen him in. He just has like a wrestler look to him. Like, I could see yeah. John Carpenter using him in like They Live or something like that. Like, uh, I don't recognize him from any other movies. I mean, I'm sure he's been in plenty of other works, uh, maybe some that we are familiar with, but. Yeah, I just thought that his character was like just super entertaining and just captured the 80s America vibe like really hilariously. Yeah, he definitely felt like a like a world wrestler. And he reminded me of it, too, especially because like his first scene when he like go enters the Kumte and he's like, I'm going to whoop this guy's butt. Like, you know, he's yeah. like talking like that. I don't remember his exact lines, but then he just just beats this guy down but like in the most hilarious fashion like i don't know just his whole fighting style is just like brute force and it's just (laughs) everyone everyone's like trying to like do like kung fu or you know whatever martial arts but it's he never punches anyone he more like just stomps people (laughs) i swear like he just like swings his arm and drops it on people (laughs) that's what that's my favorite fighting style it's just the i'm playing uh you know what is the you're playing that freaking groundhog game where you're just bashing yeah. people with a hammer you know right exactly <laughs> one funny thing that i just wanted to call it because i'm a big san francisco baseball giants fan but i found it hilarious that in the flashback scene he's wearing a san francisco giants hat but a new york giants like jersey and i was just like like who like who's doing continuity on this movie is that intentional is just a big fan of <laughs> giants like just whatever team is the giants or just like I, I don't know. I was laughing up at that moment because I thought like, oh, let's just make him super American because he's supposed to be American. And like, yeah. let's just give him a New York Giants shirt or whatever, you know, yeah. but I didn't even realize that. Yeah, there's two different Giants here. What's yeah. going on? What's going on? Are you a fan of all Giants? And then you become friends with Donald Gibb? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, this film, though, like, I don't know. I, favorite I moments would, for you do people all love it like is it like all is it loved by pretty much everyone or are there people out there who like really hate this movie you know i mean i'm sure like this movie isn't for like everyone i'd say it's for 80s like action film lovers and stuff like uh watching it like felt like my first time watching commando i watched commando more recently and like i'd say within the last three years and when I watched that movie, I was just like cracking up at how hilarious it was. Like, that's what like when I think of cheesy 80s action movies, Commando was it. But this is like now like on another level to where like Commando is like kind of funny, but it still like makes sense. But this is one where I was just like, what? Like, that was an interesting choice on the director or writer's part and even some of the actors parts at times, too. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, favorite moments, I've got to say, like uh, like I said, uh, Donald Gibb was like one of my favorite characters, but bummed me out that he had the chance to defeat the villain he easily could have, but just stopped and just chooses to celebrate to the crowd instead and then gets his ass whooped and almost dies too. And like, I love the ending of this movie, just like how, like, I love you, my brother and stuff, or like, you're my best friend. I love you. And it's like, I'll always be there for you. It's just like, it's so like. It's like super masculine, but also super bro at the same time. Yeah. So something that funny to bring up in the trivia aspect of this movie is the, the fact that this is a biographical film. Like the film kind of sells it as this is this bi- biographical film for a CIA agent that no one knew about called uh-huh. Frank. Uh, what is his name? Frank Dukes. And uh, basically, he was infiltrating the Kumtes and fighting and like winning in these term- tournaments that took place in Kowloon, the walled city. And uh, another fun trivia fact is this was filmed in Kowloon. So it's funny, though, that recently, like people have come out saying like, yo, Frank was never in the CIA. This is all BS. He BS his way into Hollywood. But, like, I don't even know if his... Uh, martial arts fighting for him like he invented is real like right like uh ducks rio is that real you know like we I don't mean, know <laughs> uh there's no reason to really believe him if he lied his way through this and stuff like there was no way to fact check as well as you could now back then so like it's hilarious but like i thought it was like hilarious that he had the the dignity to say that like jean claude was out of shape to play him <laughs> And, like, force him to go through some special training to get him to play him. And just, like, Jean-Claude is actually, like, you know, like, 
he's not an actor. He's like a fighter first. I, I don't know what he has medals and awards in, but he is like a champion of like some sort of martial arts background. And then this guy like has the nerve to say like, no, he's out of shape. He can't play me and stuff. And yeah. Imagine putting yourself that high on a pedestal. Yeah, exactly. And Jean-Claude, like I, we, I haven't seen much of his work and stuff like I'd say this is actually more of an intro. I've seen the original. Well, there's only one Street Fighter movie, but I've seen that. And I forget what other movies I've seen of his, but uh, we loved his show that was on Amazon Prime. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Hard Target. That's probably my favorite movie that he's in. Like the, mm -hmm. him with just this mullet, like and a roundhouse kicking people left and right. It's just, yeah. it's a sick John Woo action movie. Like having John Claude Van Damme in there. It's just a cool team up, you know? So for me, they like, this has to be peak Van Damme though. Like he does yeah. his famous splits that he always does, you know? He's really at the top of his game kind of in this movie because it's this like first movie. He's really trying to impress everyone. The film is like not good, obviously, but it, I thought it was a ton of fun. Like I, I was kind of like taken aback that this was as funny as it like, like, obviously, they didn't mean for it to be, like, so hilarious because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot was lost in translation, I think. But I feel like watching it here in 2020, like, it was a riot, dude. I was cracking up. Like, I was yeah. just like, yeah, I enjoyed it. One thing also I got to, like, uh, be super stoked on was just, like, uh, it gave us the, the huge – it's a huge inspiration for one of the greatest, like, fighting games ever, Mortal Kombat and stuff. Like, I'm not, like, huge into those games, but – it's obvious that Johnny Cage is based off of uh, what's it called? John Claude Van Damme because Johnny Cage's main fight is like the splits and the nut punch. And that's like uh, from this movie. But I didn't realize also, though, that like just the idea of like whole underground fighting like played a big part in Mortal Kombat was also inspired from Bloodsport. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Like I just thought that was like cool fun facts about it and stuff and definitely see it there. And yeah, I thought it like translated pretty well and like I, I love this movie. I had a huge uh, uh, binge watching experience with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, but now I really want to watch uh, a lot of Jean Claude Van Damme movies. So I'll start with the one that you were just you just mentioned, uh, Hard Target. You said, yeah, I think that that's yeah. probably your best bet. Honestly, I've watched Cyborg, not good. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it's it, it's entertaining, but it's not a good movie. Like yeah. it's a also yeah, a lot, a lot of his films were canon films. I don't think Hard Target is though. But mm -hmm. Cyborg, I'm pretty sure is canon. I could be wrong, though. But yeah, I definitely recommend Hard Target because it's John Woo, too. So you can't go wrong with John Woo. It's like, I think it's his first American film, too. So it's it's entertaining. It, it's yeah. bad in its own right, though, too. So, you know, he, John Claude's mullet is like half the price of admission right there. Yeah, <laughs> right on. So, I mean, I'm, I'm glad we watched this. I, I think I was definitely taken aback by what, basically i was getting into i thought i was getting into some like the first mma type movie definitely yeah. not that so i mean if you guys haven't seen it i definitely recommend checking this out it's like i I'd see it more as a comedy but like i felt like it was better than most of the comedies we're getting today so yeah you might enjoy it just for that yeah, I mean, even though the fight scenes, they might not hold up to compare to like modern fight scenes. It's still real stunt work that we're watching, though. And like a lot of it is really cool to see. Like we are seeing people actually throwing real kicks and stuff. And they're actually doing these flips and jumps on their own. And maybe, you know, you, you can obviously see the foot's not landing the kick, but it's still really like well done. And like it's well shot. You can actually see what's happening. It's not like extreme Paul Greengrass or Russo Brothers close ups where you just see a bunch of like elbows and hands but that's really it and stuff but yeah i mean it's cheesy but it's the proper amount of cheese to where it wasn't like bad enough to be on direct to dumpster but like i can see why it's so loved by the cult community and stuff thanks for watching guys we always appreciate the support and the best way to support the show is by going in the description box below and clicking that amazon affiliate link and watching blood sport if you haven't already please give this video a like that's a big way to help us out as well and if you haven't Please subscribe to us and hit that notification bell to get all our latest updates and news. That's it for this week. Tune in next week for a brand new video.